Hello everybody, John here again. And today onto the garage, I've got the Bosch AXT 25TC um, shredder out, which uh, I did a previous video a few years back now, where I said this is the, the best garden shredder, domestic garden shredder that you can get. Um, spoiler, I still believe that. Um, but I've now had this seven years. This is the first time it's come out this season. Um, I'm just going to give it a dust off. And I thought while I was at that, I'd, I'd show you how it's faring, how it's wearing, and uh, get some stuff pruned in it so you can see how a seven year old one of these goes. So I think you can tell this has genuinely been tucked away in a dusty shed <laughs> for about six months. So uh, no illusions for the video here. Um, all sorts of stuff all over it. But <clears throat> let's take the lid off and show you what's inside. Okay. The leftovers of last year's prunings. So the top tower part comes off quite easily. Uh, just give you some plastic cleaner. So give it a wipe over. Get rid of the debris that's collected on it in the shed. So as I say, I've had this seven years. I've had previous, previously I've had two other shredders, both electric, both very much the domestic sort of DIY end of the scale and are the ones with the whirling blade uh, and they jam up so easily that you end up resorting to do anything by hand anyway in my opinion you can buy big ass petrol powered things that are more suited to the commercial user and they're great but when you only use them, as I do, probably two or three times a year. But, as I do, I've got a reasonable uh, sized garden. A lot of branches and twigs. And quite thick and heavy stuff, if I'm honest. Where I want to um, shred. The others really don't stand up to it. And you do need something reasonably much and manly, let's say. And this is it. So there's the blade in the turbine cup. The thing that makes a difference is this conical blade. Um, it's the same one as I've had from new. <coughs> yeah, so every season I just open her up for the first time, give the, the blade cone a bit of a squirt through with WD-40 in case things are stuck. Um, She's set up so she won't run. I have got this plugged in without the tower on the top, this sort of protective bit, which is good. Yeah, obviously slightly frustrating at this point because all I wanted to do was just blip it, rotate it, and then squirt some more oil in. But uh, I'll do that from the top in a moment. So yeah, it's not like it gets heavily serviced by me or anything like that, that's for sure. This unit is basically a, as a guide, so you can stack lots of things in it and leave them to get on with it. But it also means it's pretty safe. It's quite difficult to um, get yourself anywhere near the blades by accident. Obviously, if you want to, then you will. But you're not going to accidentally come into contact with anything sharp and turn in. Um, it's got a big, whoops, it's got a big tray for the chips. The chips it makes are reasonably fine, um, generally very uniform as well. So it can be put straight back on your garden as dressing if you want. But 
for me it's just about how compact it makes everything and the fact that it deals with such a good range of uh, sizes quite big diameters if you like it's only got three controls on the back here just give them buttons a wipe off again there we go go or forward or on stop and reverse and reverse is just to unblock um, if you have a blockage so what I'm going to do now is just give it a blip forward not the quietest of machines but tolerable you know you don't have to wear earplugs or a set of ear defenders if you don't want to now that's running again just a bit of WD-40 more as uh, rust preventative than anything else let that run and then if I just take the top off one more time go um, there's one other feature I want to show you and that is we've got the whoops let's turn you over there there's a turbine cut blade it goes round towards us this way and shears things against this aluminium plate down here there is a knob on the side here the black one what I'm pointing at that moves that um, aluminium plate in and what that does is it allows the blade to cut a new surface into the aluminium the blade is very hard the aluminium is obviously relatively soft um, it's the aluminium that gets damaged when things go past for it a little bit too hard. So once a season, I dress the blade by basically winding in the aluminium just a little bit and allowing it to cut um, a little bit more off that surface and get a nice intimate um, compact uh, contact or shearing face to um, cleave things nice and sharply. Uh, I can't run the bl blades until the tower's back on and then you won't be able to see. But basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this a couple of notches. I'll be able to hear <coughs> the blade touching the aluminium. As soon as I hear that, I'll just let it run and leave it in that position and then I'll have a new sharpened edge. Let's get it running. Really squeaking, the aluminium sounds like it stopped squeaking now, so I'll just give it another touch. There it goes. Yep, that's it. So now I'll press stop and First thing I'll do is, ah, there we go, see that? That's the aluminium swarf that's come off that sort of shearing block. Back in there. And under this tower again. And you see some evidence of bits of uh, swarf knocking around. There's actually a piece of wood stuck there, look. So I'll pick that out, get a, a lever. Oh, there he goes. But yeah, you see a few bits of aluminium swarf on the turbine. But that's all come off this plate here, where that is engaged with it. And now it'll have a really good intimate contact. So... After that, I give it one final dousing with the WD, put the tower back on, and she's ready to use. That's the whole of my year's maintenance and servicing, really. There's a pusher, but you can push in here, but you know won't reach the blades. Um, just to dislodge things that are a bit sort of bouncing above it, they're not heavy enough to fall through the blade. 
a little tray here where you can put your secateurs or anything else you're working with. A place to stick that and the handle. And if I've got one criticism of the design, and it is difficult to know how they would have done it better anyway, is this is really well constructed as in big heavy motor and lots of aluminium and, and heavier metal parts in this top part. The bottom is empty, it's on a metal frame, but when you move it on these handy dandy wheels, which are great, roll well, it's really top heavy. And I drag this on a fair size guard and it starts to bounce and it's forever sort of toppling over doing that. Difficult to see what else you'd do other than giving it a much wider axle which ruins it for storage and all the rest of it. That's the only negative I've found of the entire unit. I wouldn't even have a bigger tray. A few people have looked at it and said, oh, you're not going to get much in that. But it does chop everything so fine that um, you really don't need anything bigger than that. Plus it starts to get heavy and difficult to lift. So are there better shredders? Yes, of course there are. Uh, are there better shredders sort of price? I don't think so. Um, you can certainly get bigger capacity ones. You can definitely get cheaper ones. The reason I think this is great is just the way it works. So I'm just going to chuck a few bits and pieces in. And it's the lack of having to prep or think about, is it too big? For your average person in an average garden, I don't think you can get better than this. <laughs> You only really have to touch this stuff because it's too it's too light now to fall down into the blade. So you just do that. And you don't have to get it perfect because the next branch you stick through is going to push it down. Let's show you what that's done. Give that tray a shake. All that turned to that. It's all fine. I see a lot of green on the top there, but if I dig down for you, see the wood in amongst it. Sort of chip where it makes. And yeah, thicker stuff seems to go through just fine as well because basically it's chiseling, scraping, grinding, like a meat mincer really, rather than trying to chop through like a lot of them do. So, seven years on, not a moment's bother really. Um, negatives, unstable when you're dragging it across um, anything other than marble smooth ground but you don't like you do that very often so you know when, you, when you're doing that 
be a little bit careful with it. It does start to wobble and shimmy and, and go. Uh, occasionally, it will stop and just go beep, beep, beep because something has got jammed and that generally um, something that's quite soft and quite green has gone through and slipped through both sides of the drum and uh, it just stops itself, it goes beep, beep, beep. You press the reverse button, you hear clink, clink <laughs> as it chops it off on the reverse cut, press go again. I've never had it jam so it wouldn't just correct itself with a quick press of the reverse button. Um, and yeah, really, I'm not even showing any real signs of wear, if I'm honest. Um, the blade or the blade guide, the, the bit it cuts against is obviously a consumable, but I've had this seven years and I'd be surprised if I don't get another seven years out of it really easily in my large but domestic garden. Um, what you've just seen me chucked into it, I will probably put another hmm, three times that in today. And again three times throughout the year and a lot of it is generally a lot thicker and woodier and no issues no issues at all not the cheapest thing that's the only other negative i uh, don't know what the uk price is on this or its current equivalent because maybe this particular model axt 25 tc is no longer the current uh, designation they may have moved it on and you know changed the color of a button or something well that's it for this one Quick review update on the turbine cut AXT 25TC from Bosch. Seven years on, still think it's the best garden shredder you can buy for domestic use with a cable. Look after yourself, guys.